Well, this is definitely not a SEMA truck, that's for sure. All this dirt and shit just came off my rims because I obviously couldn't clean the inside of the rims at the wash that I was at. But it's fine, it's fine. All right guys, so it just got done snowing here and the trees look fucking beautiful. Like, goddamn. You would think it's a winter wonderland out in here. Sadly, there was no snow on my truck, like none at all. Or I would have gotten some pretty sick pictures, but I mean, hey. All right, guys, we just got done putting in the front end shock extensions on. These sons of bitches right here. It's pretty easy. You just disconnect the original shock bolt and shove the shock up. Shove these things in, rotate it 90 degrees right here. Bolt it back together, bolt it back together. You always want to make sure that they're snugged up before you tighten them down to torque spec. Then you can, uh, well, make it ride nice, I guess. Alright guys, so, what I just tried is I retorqued the intake manifold. And, uh, well, I mean, it's not that hard. Other than the fact that if you don't have an inch pound torque wrench like me, you're gonna have to convert inch pounds into foot pounds. That was kind of a almost a bad thing that I did. But basically, what I did is I got down in here and I torqued down these five on this side ah you can't really see them that well but those right there those bolts five over there five on this side those are harder to see just because of air lines and such but you have to retorque those there's a special sequence it's oh that's awkward it's one, two, three, four, five, six. No, 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 no. Well, you know what? I'm not even going to try because I know I'll just mess it up. But anyway, ugh, you retorqued all those. And the two, there was two that were at improper torque. They were really loose. All right, guys. So as I was saying before I was so interrupted by my phone dying um two out of these 10 bolts here were super loose like really loose and it was these front ones right here two most two that are in the front of the very most so that one right there and then the one that's kind of hidden by the alternator right there. Those two were really loose below torque spec. So, tighten those back up. And really only happens when it's cold. So, obviously that will be in the morning when it will be cold. Uh, we'll see what happens with it. Hopefully, it actually get ri gets rid of my problem completely. But I guess we'll just have to see. Alright guys, it is the next morning. And after I ended the video of torquing the intake manifold, I actually went down to Advanced Auto and had them test my battery. And it was at about 300 of 650 cold cranking amps. Which doesn't work well. So, got a new battery put it in and the only thing that's different about this battery than the last one is this battery one works and two it doesn't have top post 
My old one had both side and top post, so I could wire my amp and hook it up to my battery on the top post. Well, now I'm going to have to figure something else out, because obviously it doesn't have that. But the truck is running pretty well, considering it, obviously. So, I guess we'll just see how it goes. Alright guys, so, I now have a new battery. Reason for that, obviously, is because battery was shot and I mean shot um, the cold cranking amps on the old battery were specced at 650 and when we tested the battery at advanced auto it was at 300 of 650 and that's like under half so we got a new battery and this battery is only side post. It doesn't have top post. So I had to figure out a different way to wire my subs. What I got is this little double, it's actually, it's pretty much just a double ended battery connector. Got it at Advanced Auto. There, it's the same on each end. But you just, you know, stick it on in there where that one is. And you screw it in all the same. It's pretty much the same deal except for you got an extra little position there where you could wire a sub. Or say if you had like, shit, I don't know, something. If you had something that you needed to wire, you could do it. So yeah, time to throw this thing in. Alright guys, so we have the original terminal connector off, or I, I guess out is more like it. Let's see. What you do for that is, if your hands are warm, it's nice and easy, you can just press on it here. Like I'll show you on negative, I'm not actually going to take it out, but you just press right there, and it will kick it out of the rubber boot that it's in. It's pretty simple. Um, if your hands are cold though, which mine were the first time that I tried to take this out, it hurts. So I got vice grips and I tore it out of there, but I didn't need to do it this time. So, time to put this one in. See how it works. And we have all of it back hooked up. We have the negative on, we have this positive on. And I did add just a little bit of a protective layer right there. Ah, oh, shit, you can't see that. Hang on. I added that right there. That right there. To cover up this body panel metal. Because it is pretty close. It gets pretty close right there. We don't want that touching because obviously that is ground. That's all grounded. And if we touch positive to the ground, eh, that's... Well, one way to see fireworks, I guess, but not my preferred way. So, this all should work. Hopefully it does, and if it doesn't, well, I'm out $5. Not really, but it's fine. Alright guys, I just turned on the stereo. And the subs are working, so that's a plus. Um... I'm gonna go drive around because my parents don't like it when they can hear the subs in the house because you know they shouldn't be able to or something like that I don't know I don't know I have these on still it's dark it's pretty much dark now not completely but still so let's go on a drive